thank you for coming. Um, so, uh, as, as Dirk has uh, told you, I'm, an, I'm a modern armorer, and um, uh, let's talk about how I, I get started. Uh, I do a lot of research. I, um, I come to the museum, I look at uh, pieces of armor, I take a lot of pictures. So these are some um, uh, copies of pictures I've, that I've uh, um, made so I can, I can have references. Uh, and um, then what I'll do, uh, also I will take and make a drawing. So here's a drawing of, um, basically I have the person that I'm making the armor for uh, lay down and I trace their arms or legs. Uh, sometimes I make leg castings uh, and I do a lot of like uh, measurements, circumferences, so I know exactly their size. Uh, and uh, with a drawing like this, then I can then take uh, and start to figure out the patterns. So here's some patterns. The patterns are made out of uh, poster board or cardboard and uh, they, uh, they've taken years to develop, you know, and over the years I'll look at things uh, with sort of an artist's eye and sort of change, you know, shave off a little here and there. Um, and I always mark my patterns with uh, the name and the date and, you know, if I need, added more, took away less, I have whole files of patterns. Um, so then I take a pattern, once I have a pattern like this, uh, I'll take it and put it on a piece of metal and I'll trace it. Uh, and then I can start to cut those pieces out. So here's what's called a lame, and uh, I'm about to cut this out. Uh, and the tool that I use to cut pieces out with is this. It's a shear, uh, just kind of like the shear that you see uh, in, the, uh, in the image that Dirk showed earlier. Um, my shear fits right in the hardy hole like that, so I can cut a piece of metal so I can just trim that right off. All right, so this is how I cut the pieces. And uh, I have some pre-cut pieces here. This is what the patterns look like after they've been cut. And what I'll do, I'll take a, a file or a grinder and smooth off the edges because it'll be very sharp. And uh, so how, the next step then is to take this and start hammering, okay? Uh, um, so that's what I'm gonna do. Let me just clear my work table here. So I'm gonna take a piece like this and uh, I'm gonna start hammering, okay? Actually, you know what, I should check. Uh, I should make sure that I'm making a right and a left because uh, that's not so good. Uh, if you make uh, two of the wrong part, it's kind of annoying. All right, <laughs> I've done it before, <laughs> long time ago. All right, so, and always measure twice. All right, I got that, okay. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is start hammering. All right, so um, you can see what's going on here. As, as I'm hammering, I'm, I'm squeezing the metal between the hammer and the anvil, and this is, is compressing the metal, and the metal has to go somewhere, so it pushes out, and it starts to create roundness, okay? Uh, and this is one type, of, one type of technique that's usually used 
Uh, you never find armor where they just take a plate and they just bend it around something. They're always hammering it. All, everything is always hammered. And this, uh, this gives great strength to the piece of metal. All right, so I can continue hammering this uh, until it comes completely around. Um, this probably isn't quite hammered enough. Uh, and sometimes if I really want to cause something to move, I'll hammer it really, you know, uh, really aggressively or with a, with a heavier hammer, all right? And that will, in fact, that's what I'm going to do right here to give a little, what I want to do is put a little bit of a, a, a curve on there. So I'm going to sort of hold it at an angle. I'm, uh, okay, there we go. Now we, uh, I'm building up a little bit of a curve there because this plate is going to join up against another plate. All right. So another thing that is great about the hammering is whatever your surface is, that's the surface that you're going to get here. So if this anvil is very smooth, then I'll get a very smooth outer surface that'll be easier to uh, sand and polish um, and will make like a, ni a much nicer surface. All right. The inside of armor parts are always very rough and you see the hammer marks there. Okay, so uh, I'm going to hammer this a little bit more, like do another quick pass, but with maybe lighter hammering, and then I'm going to bend it into shape. All right, so the last part here is I'm going to bend it a little bit around. And at the ends, I might need a mallet. Okay, so now we have our plate, which is going to go about right here. And it will be articulated onto something like this. Already it, it fits pretty well. Now, um, not all the shapes, you know, there's a lot of shapes that are, are, are easy like this. You're sort of, sort of like a gutter-shaped plate that goes here and here. And there are what are called lanes that go along here that allow, um, that allow movement. Uh, that's very easy. That, those are all done like I just showed you here. But sometimes there's pieces uh, such as for the elbows that are very deep and drawn out, and, or for like the legs, uh, like especially the, uh, the ankle area. Uh, they're very shapely, okay? And any time that you want to really uh, create extreme shapes, then you need a forge. So I'm going to turn my forge on. This is sort of a little mini forge uh, that I've built. Um, works off of a propane torch. So I'm going to get that going right now. 
We're going to let that heat up. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to get prepared. So I have my plate that's already cut out that's going to go in there and get, get hot. Actually, I'm going to prep it a little bit before I, before I forge it. So I have special uh, tools that I've made. Um, they're kind of like, in the blacksmithing world, they're called swages. And they're sort of these hollow forms that you can hammer into. So I'm going to prep this plate by forming it a little bit. So now I'm going to stick this plate into the forge. And while that's getting hot, I'm going to set up for my next operation here. Set that off. Start. Yeah. So it takes a little while. Uh, as the plate gets hot, the metal uh, will, will it'll heat up a lot quicker when I go to put it back in there. Um, so metal, uh, the more you look at it, and the more I've studied armor, uh, uh, it starts to look more like clay. All right, and um, what we're doing here by heating it up is we're causing it to get softer. All right, and then it's easier for me to manipulate and to get these interesting shapes and forms. Uh, it can also be hammered to some degree and will sort of uh, act kind of like clay, just hammering by cold, but definitely the heat makes a giant difference. I think we're almost ready here. Let's see. Yeah, that's good. So I'm going to get my hammer ready, have my tongs, got my steak ready. Okay, take this out. See how hot that is? All right, so it's cooled down there in that, in that short amount of time. So I'm going to put it back in the fire. I think I'm going to switch it around because the heat is a little bit different on the other side. Yeah, OK. So it's really hot. I can't touch that. Uh, it's like 1,500 degrees, 1,800 degrees. Uh, but uh, the metal becomes soft, and then it's easier to stretch and manipulate. Uh, and there's, different, there's a lot of different techniques um, for working with uh, metal and for forming armor. You can, what I'm doing right now is stretching the metal down into something. If you're not careful, the metal can get too thin, and then it will break through. Um, another technique is to take metal and form it over the top of a stake like a round ball like this, and, and bring it around, and the metal will get thicker. So all of these techniques, they use mechanical advantage to, uh, uh, to gain leverage over the material. All right, I think this is ready. Got my hammer there. Yep. 
Very hot. That's scale. All right, and I'll put it back in again. So this takes time. Usually when I'm working in my shop and, and uh, I have my forge set up, I have a much bigger forge than this. Um, you know, I'll kind of like go back and forth between two different things. So instead of just standing around waiting for something to get hot, you know, I'll be hammering something else or doing something else. It takes a lot of time to make a full suit of armor. Uh, and in the Middle Ages, they had whole shops of guys, uh, masters and apprentices, uh, doing different things. I think Dirk is gonna talk about that later. Um, and see me, I'm just one guy, so it takes a while. It can take like, you know, upwards of 400 hours to make one, you know, suit of armor, uh, depending upon decoration and how fancy it is and how fitted. Okay, that should be good now. Now we have uh, a pretty deep shape uh, starting to form there and uh, one of the things I do is I, I work from the very general to the very specific. So I've, I've, I've got a nice shape here but I need, now I need to refine it more. Um, I have other tools. I think what I'm going to do is define the point. So I'm going to put it back in. And use something like this. Pull that out. Okay. So now I'm going to push this down. An interesting thing is happening now. Since I'm hammering on the sides here and trying to develop a point, it's actually pulling the metal and causing the metal to bend up like that. But we don't want that, so we're just going to pound it down. All right, so now I'm, I'm developing a little bit of a point on there, on the end of the metal. Uh, and I want to curve these around further. So I have another uh, type of device that's going to allow me to, to push it around. Okay, and now the other side.
So while we're waiting for that to heat up, I want to talk about hammers. Uh, all the hammers have different shapes, okay? And they have, like this hammer is, is very flat. This is for planishing on the outside of a surface, okay? I'm going to talk about planishing in a little while. Then we have a slightly curved side. Then we have a hammer here that has a little bit more of a curve and then even more of a curve. And all of these hammers, they have specific weights. These light hammers are really good for planishing. Planishing is when we're hammering over and over again and we're squeezing the metal and making it smooth. Okay, this, this should be ready. Yep. Curve that around. I really want to force this around so it has the right curve for the elbow. All right, it's a little lopsided there. Okay, I think we got to do. I think I have to push it out a little bit more and then maybe define the point. All right, so these these tools get really hot. You have to be careful. Okay, next thing. I'm actually going to do something a little unconventional. I'm gonna, actually going to use this like a die to form the metal. Okay, that's good. There we go. So that, yeah, that, that point is much better now. I like that much better. Now, right now, it's, uh, I'm going to switch this off. Right now, it's very rough. It's black. Uh, let's say we want to smooth it out. So this is where uh, I mentioned planishing. We're going to planish the pieces. Let me get this out of the way. It's still really hot. Uh, I'm not going to cool this down because um, a lot of times the type of steel that I'm working with has carbon in it, and the carbon makes it so I can harden and temper. That means like when I, if I quench it in the water, it would start to get brittle or really tough, and I don't want to do that. So I'm actually just going to just continue working it, but working it cold. Okay. All right. And for that, this is what I'm talking about with the planishing. We're going to hammer from the inside. Manipulate this. All right, there we go. So now all of the, those blows, the squeezing of the metal, any irregularities are going to be squeezed out by the hammer uh, against the anvil and make for a smooth surface. I'm just going to do a little bit more here. Uh, and then I'm going to move on.
Now planishing, now, planishing can also be done from the outside. You don't have to planish just from the inside. I could also hammer it from the outside. Uh, I do have you know, stakes here where I could hammer. And here's a case where I'd want to use this very flat part of the hammer to planish. Okay. This is probably this is probably cooled down enough so it's still warm so I'm going to cool it off in this bucket of water. Dry it off. Take a look at what I have. All right, at this point in time, I'd probably look at my drawings or I'd look at my references and decide if I need to do more shaping. Um, right now, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. It's going to need some more work. Uh, but um, now you've seen how metal can be shaped, can be formed into something. Uh, with the hot working, here are some examples of things that have been hot worked, OK? This is, um, this is a reinforcing plate for 15th century arm harness. There's actually a similar plate on display in the galleries. Uh, and this is a very rough uh, version, like what it looks like halfway through the process of being made. It, um, there's a lot of hammer marks on the inside. This is all done hot because the metal has to be formed around into this sort of saddle potato chip-like shape. It's very difficult. So this has probably got about five or six hours of work in it right now, and it will need another six hours of work just to, just to be done. So armor is very labor intensive. Here's another uh, plate. This is a greave. OK, this is for the leg. Let's see. So it will go like right here, all right? This also needs a lot more work, um, but it, you know, it starts out very rough. And to get these bumps out, I would planish, OK, hammering from the inside. And you can see, like, just an ordinary hammer like this is going to be difficult to get in there. So I actually have specialized hammers that are like this. So now, when I want to get in to the inside of this piece, now I can do it. You can see how you can see how this hammer with the long head reaches right in there, okay, and uh, allows me to hammer and planish the inside of this plate. All right. So another uh, thing that you find on armor, uh, you find these uh, crests, okay, or flutes. All right, they're where the metal is like pushed up, and you usually find them running like along the legs. Um, you find them sometimes in the shoulders. You find them in Gothic armor a lot. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do something like that. So I'm going to take a flat plate and uh, I'm going to planish it a little bit. And then, and then I'm going to take a stake, lock in here, and I'm going to hold the plate right on the edge of this stake, and
And now this is how that uh, this is how that these flutes are put in. Okay, so they're hammered over a stake like this, and they're put into the metal. Okay. Now uh, one other uh, process that I want to show um, is a lot of armor has rolled edges or hemmed edges that that sit next to the skin, like around the cuff or around the neck or anywhere where you know like a plate could rub against something you want to have sort of extra protection. So uh, that's where a hem or rolled edge is, all right? So I'm going to show you how I put a rolled edge on. Um, the first thing I do is mark the plate like that. My table is really starting to look like uh, the, the, the uh, workshop of Maximilian here with all this you know, scattered stuff there. And my, my shop actually looks quite disorganized, but I know where everything is. OK. So what I want is a good edge on the anvil. And uh, I'm going to hold this here. Let's see. Move that. And I'm going to hammer that over. Okay, that's like the first course. That's the first course. Now I'm going to hammer it again. Okay, all right, so now the, uh, the edge is formed over like that, and uh, now I'm going to take it even further over this, this stake. Let me readjust this because it's actually, the way the force is going, it's pushing it over. Okay, if I've done my job right, this should be, now this, this edge has been knocked over far enough and now it's like a wave crashing down and I can bring it all the way down. Okay, now I'm going to match up the edge along here.
Okay, that looks pretty good. So now I'm just going to bring it all the way. Actually, you know what? Jeff, Jeff. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Dirk says it's time, so it's time. <laughs> there, we have a lot more things to show. So this is, uh, so anyway, you end up something like this. Mm -hmm. um, so that's your, your hemmed or rolled edge. Uh, they can be very fine. They can be very thick. Uh, the next step would be to articulate, OK? the piece, all right, and then they get joined with nuts and bolts so that when you're done, you have something that looks like this, okay? This is a completed arm harness. See how well it moves, okay? Um, and these nuts and bolts here are just temporary. They're just so I can look at it and make sure that it articulates properly. Uh, the next step would be then um, to take it apart. Actually, I harden and temper my armor so that it's really tough. Uh, this is a process where you heat it up and then quench it in water, and it steams a lot, and uh, it makes the, the metal very hard. Uh, then, uh, then there's sanding and polishing, and then assembly, where you have to rivet everything together. So it's, uh, you know, we've only shown you kind, kind, kind of the very uh, basic steps here, but I, I hope you get a sense of how much work is involved in one of these amazing uh, pieces of art that you see as, as, as a piece of armor. Okay. All right. Thank you.